Hello, everyone. Welcome. Happy Thursday to folks out there. My name is Eric Coffey, the host of GovCon Giants podcast. Uh, we're going to discuss today, we're going to actually look at a few bid opportunities and go over the requirements. Um, and so very excited to have you guys with me. Uh, looking forward to covering these lessons today. I actually want to take a look at this project in South Dakota for this bridge replacement and use that as an example. But in the meantime, we'll be pulling down a list of uh, SAM.gov opportunities. And uh, I like to look at what I call bid opportunities. So um, looking forward to conversing with everyone out here this evening. Looking forward to sharing the knowledge and asking questions. I see we've got six people watching. So go ahead and drop in there who you are. Tell me what is it you do and tell me where you're calling from. So uh, let us know while we get started. But today we're going to go over some bid opportunities. I like bid opportunities because for me, when we go to Sam.gov, a lot of times people are asking, they're looking at this stuff, they're confused, they're not sure what to do. And we found ways to take this data, pull it off into Excel sheets like this, so I can easily search and sort through the data. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that in this video, amongst other things. Again, if you're just joining us now, uh, tell me who you are. Hit, tell me where you're from. Tell me what is it you do so that we can, when I'm talking about opportunities out here, we can specifically uh, address your needs and concerns. So again, this is our channel for you. We take the C students, the forgotten people, the throwaway. We like the misfits, right? Give me all the people out here who have grit and resilience and who want to um, hustle. Like I want those are the folks that I want, right? A lot of times, my PhDs, my my super smart nerdy people, they're too scared to take risk and chances. So give me the people who's like, hey. Um, I may not know all the technical aspects, but my EQ is high and I'm willing to do what it takes to make it happen in 2024. That's the people that I'm looking for, right? Because that's the people that are going to go from where they're at today to making a transformation in their life. And so we want to be there to support you, want to be there to help you guys along that path. So again, drop it in the chat right now, who you are, tell me what it is that you do whether it's your business or your uh, job. And then also tell me where you're calling in from because that's super, super, super important. So uh, big up uh, Orlando, Florida, bridging the gap. Love it, love it, love it. My man, Derek Smith is in here. Um, I love it. Derek Smith, always a pleasure, my man. Juvie lover down in New Jersey. All right, welcome Jersey in the building. April Seymour, Bright Moon Creations, uh, Mohawk Nation, Upstate New York, brand new cage coat, ready to go. I love it. I love it. All right. It says, looking forward to the five-day challenge. That's right. If you haven't already signed up for our webinar, make sure to do that. We're looking forward to connecting folks out here. One of the things that I will say is, and by the way, if you, if you just click the link, um, that's already on the screen. It'll take you to a webinar that we're hosting. We're hosting later on. So if you have time tonight at 8 p.m., we will be hosting a webinar. And uh, the challenge, so let me talk about the challenge real quick today. Thank you, Catherine Hill, for purchasing my book. Let me talk to you real quick about this challenge. So what we're doing is um, starting April the 10th, we're going to be having a challenge because uh, what we've learned is even though you're starting out in business and this may be uh, you're successful in another area, when you come over to the government side and you start working with the government, they're going to want you to, um, it's going to be a hard road if you haven't had any past performance working with an agency. So what typically happens is most people tell you to team up with, find a partner or someone who's already working at these agencies uh, to team up with to bring the capacity, to bring the actual qualifications. And so that's kind of how you break in. So we want to talk about um, this particular month, uh, we are doing a five-day challenge. We're going to help people to identify those partners and also consultant clients to work with so that we can leverage that to get you into some of these federal agencies. I had an interview today with a podcast guest who's doing about 40 million a year, 300 employees. He's going from 40 million to 100 million. And he said that that was the key to him breaking into the agencies is finding teaming partners to help them do that. So again, 
we're going to have the starting uh, the end of this month because courses close out, but we're going to have our five day challenge beginning on April the 10th. So if you want to jump on that webinar, it's at govconeric.com slash join right there. And then take it over to the webinar and we're going to talk about that among some other things. So again, who's in here? Ashley Spur. Welcome, Ashley. Uh, Lake Wales, Florida, general contractor. Who else do we have? Leroy, Miami, Florida. Love it. Um, yes, Leroy, I got your information. So I, I'm going to touch base with you, Leroy. Again, this is our busy month. That's why you see me guys making a lot of content, a lot of videos. Uh, so we'll be, we'll touch base with folks out here. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I got a, I got a hard stop at eight. So let me, uh, let's get started. You guys ready? Cool beans. So one of the things, and we, you know, we do this probably once every other month, I'll do this, this, these videos, right? Because a lot of times people don't understand. So I'm here on SAM.gov, which most of, most of us are aware of SAM.gov. Again, this is not a SAM.gov training video. We specifically want to go over bid opportunities. Uh, so one of the things that I do and uh, is when I'm on SAM.gov and I'm such selecting domain contract opportunities here, right? So I select my domain contract opportunities, and then I choose my notice type. And a lot of people get confused here with these different types of notices. Anybody out here confused with the type of notices that they should be looking for? Uh, hold on, let me move my screen because it looks like I'm in the way. Okay, there we go. So now you can see the different notice types on here. Um, what I had on here before was solicitation. And so when you look at solicitations, these are the actual projects that are out that have been posted. But what I like to focus on in these videos is sources sought. Now, why do I focus on sources sought? Does anybody know why we focus on Kimala? Welcome, Kimala. Welcome to the party today. Arshad. Welcome, Arshad, to the party today. All right. So why does anyone know why we focus on sources sought? Does anybody know what a source of sought is? Right? Where are my smart people at? So the reason why we focus on sources sought is why? Because what the government is doing is they're actually in the source of sought phase. Kimla knows. Kimla's one of my smart people out there. Kimla. Go ahead, Kimla. Why do we focus why do we focus on sources sought? I'm like Kimla. Why do we focus on, I'm pulling it back up here real quick. Okay. All right. Ashley says, oh, wait, hold on. It's a great way to get in front of the customer at an early stage opportunity development. Exactly. Right. Um, that's the best answer. So let me show you what Ashley's referring to. So this, I like to use this particular chart. Um, this comes from Defense Acquisition University. So again, I didn't make it. I like to use these charts that come from other sources. This is the place where the, your contracting officers, the people who are actually awarding contracts, this is where this is one of the places they get their training. It's not the only source they get the training. This is very important for you guys to understand this chart. And I'll tell you why this is important for you to understand this chart. Because a lot of us out here, let me see if I can make this chart bigger. It's kind of too big. Uh, let me see. All right. I don't know how to make it bigger. But either way, so a lot of us out here, right, when we are looking at government soliciting work. So remember the first thing I pulled down was called solicitation. And then you see pre-solicitation. And then you see post-award. Right. So if you look here under the pre-solicitation phase, it goes through the process, right, that the government is actually dealing with initial planning, market research, define requirements, acquisition business strategy. And then you have the solicitation in green. So the reason why this is important is because I've had several people reach out to me and say, Eric, there's a solicitation out. I reached out to the contracting officer and they didn't call me back. They said they can't talk to me. 
I want to go meet with the contracting officer. I see this bid out on Sam.gov and I want to go meet with them to discuss with them. And so the problem with that is once a solicitation has been released, they cannot give you any additional information that's not publicly shared with everyone else. So you are jeopardizing someone's job when you're trying to ask them specific questions about solicitation that's not in writing, that's not part of an RFI, which they can answer publicly for everyone so that you don't have an unfair advantage. Now, when it's in blue, right? When it's in blue, like Ashley said, this is the time where you can actually get in front of the customer at an early stage of an opportunity. So I, I want you guys to screenshot this or I'll drop in here the link because we need to understand this when we're on sam.gov. This is super important because a lot of times we want to call the contracting officers. We want to call the government. We've got questions. We're confused. It doesn't make sense. We want to reach out to them. And just recently, one of my students who's in my training programs, apparently they did not I guess I didn't teach this well. So that's why I'm teaching it publicly for all you guys out here. So Derek, I want you to hear us. Margaret Stevens, again, when it's in blue, right? That's that's the time when you want to talk to people. Uh, like Ashley says here, right? It can also help you shape the acquisition strategy, small business, 8A, SDOV, WSB, set aside, right? Now, once it's in green and it's released, there's nothing anyone can do. So I want you to know that um, because, again, um, on the second chart, it says kind of what Ashley said, they can do the acquisition strategy and the plan of how they want to push this out, whether it's via uh, any type of social economic set aside, whether it's small business or whether it's full and open competition. So I want to go over that first before we jump into this, because that they go hand in hand. Right. So when we're looking at sources sought, remember, that's the area where we can still talk to the government customer. So I, the reason why this video is called Bid Opportunities is because you can still talk to the government customer. You can still help them shape the requirements. You can still influence whether or not this goes to full and open competition or it gets set aside or even, right, it can even potentially be sole source now. For me, it's really just wanting to talk to the customer, get a relationship, and get in front of them. So I, we're going to discuss today source of sought. All right. Now, what I like to do is, uh, so I went no, notice type, source of sought. I pulled it down. And then I like to look at, update it. I'm going to put the past week. And you'll see 886 results. That's too many. So let me go in the last three days. All right. 582 results. Cool. All right. By the way, 72 people watching, please hit the thumbs up button. Give us a like. So now we went ahead and did that. So we've got our sources sought notice. We've got past three days. Uh, from there, I like to click this actions button, right? The three dots. You will not see this button if you're not logged in. So if, you, if you're trying to do this at home with me, along with me, and you're not logged in, you will not see those three dots. So once you're logged in, you see the three dots, you hit download, click CSV, and then I click the download button. All right. So again, any questions about that? Three dots, actions, download, CSV, and then click the green, the download button. All right. Once we've done that, I like to go, because I love Google Docs. I'll show you from the beginning. I like my Google Docs because they're free. So in Google Sheets, I can go in and I can click open file and then I can select the file and open it up. And that's what I did here. So now I have all of the sources sought notices for the last three days in this sheet that I can do this. I could scroll up my mouse and look at all the opportunities. Why do I do this? Why don't I just go one by one on Sam.gov? Why don't I um, do a safe search, right? Let me tell you why. If you scroll down this, this list, the people who put this in here are humans. Humans have errors. So there's likely, if you don't have this, pull down and you don't review it in its entirety, 
there's human error that comes into play. They could have miscategorized something. They could have miswrote it. They could have. And so if you don't actually get a chance to see it, then it's quite possible that you miss out on an opportunity. So I like to look at it from this standpoint so that, that way I can go through and browse it and you can see how easily we could do that. As opposed to if we're in sam.gov here and we're trying to browse this, even if I change the results to 100 items per page, right? I still, this is the extent of the information that I get. So I go over here. It's in here. You can search keywords. You can you can move it around. Like I mean, it's just a lot of information that's already extracted for you. So I use this particular format. I found it to be easier. Uh, if you have a different format that you use, please drop it in the chat. Um, I I welcome all ideas. Uh, Ashley, how, how do you do it for your clients? So if you're just joining us, we're going over Sam.gov bid opportunities. And particularly, we're looking at, right, this area in blue, the pre-solicitation phase, market research phase, and those are the things that we're focused on tonight. Cool. Now, I do want to actually go over this particular solicitation. I have pulled it down. So I do want to talk about this just because I want to go over some requirements for folks. Um, so it's this is a little bit different than what I would normally do. So I'll do that, but I'll do that towards the end. All right. Questions, comments, concerns. Am I moving too fast? Am I moving too slow? Are you guys with me? Do y'all hear me? Yes. I'm not getting no feedback. Olivia, welcome. Retired Army uh, Logistics, 26 years of logistics past performance. Looking forward to partnering with the company. Great. All right. So Ashley says it depends on a client and what CRM they have. We also use Excel documents if no CRM is implemented by our client. Okay, good stuff. All right. Now, again, Ashley is the professional. She's the expert. By the way, if you're on LinkedIn, make sure to go follow Ashley. I'm going to put her LinkedIn in the chat. Hold on. Ashley, let me pull you up on LinkedIn. Ashley, you're going to be very popular. You keep coming on my... Um, you keep coming on here. All right. If you're on LinkedIn, there you go. There's Ashley. I'll pull her on the screen. There you go. So Ashley's the one that's always answering questions. <clears throat> so, um, she, she's, uh, she's done this successfully for some of my, uh, podcast guests in the past. So she knows her stuff, but all right. Uh, in fact, I, she could probably teach me a thing or two, you know, one thing that I'm not, I'm not afraid of, uh, to say what I know and what I don't know. I don't know everything about this industry, right? Um, I, I happen to be successful in one space and then I interview a lot of other successful people. So, I don't know anything, everything about the industry. I think that a lot of us, uh, when you start to get really cocky, then that's when you kind of lose your footing. So uh, always be a student. I'm always a student. And um, so I, I also learn by teaching. So I would encourage you guys, as you learn things, to start teaching it to others. And then that will help you basically elevate your game. So, all right, let's go back to what we're talking about today. And I don't know why this screen looks funky like that, but it is sam.gov. So, you know. Um, that's how they do things on sam.gov. It's always looking kind of funky. So let's go back in. I'm going to go back to my contract opportunity sheet. And really, like, like we said, this is your opportunity to submit a response to a government official and have them inquire, right? Maybe you're help saying that you can solve a need. Maybe you're just letting them know you exist and you have the capacity to do this. So for example, this particular RFI, I'll make this bigger because I think it's a little bit small. Is that better for everyone? There you go. I'll make this bigger on your screen. Um, so when we're looking at this list, for example, see this RFI for armed guard services, 
Uh, by the way, if anybody wants me to go over anything, let me know and I'll stop and go over it. Welcome, Meryl Bell. Welcome, Maria Mercedes. So, so this is an RFI for an IDIQ Armored Guard Services. I think this is a good one to take a look at. And you guys can see the requirements. A lot of times the requirements for sources sought notices are very, they're not a full booklet. They're not a full proposal. A lot of times it's your capability statement plus some additional supporting documents that show that you have some experience doing this in the past. And that's typically the extent of a lot of these sources sought. So it's not crazy, crazy, crazy requirement. I think I like this better. All right, so let's we'll look at the Armored Guard Services. We'll come back to that. Let's see if there's anything else that anybody has that I'm scrolling through that you want to take a look at. Uh, infrastructure support. Infrastructure support. Let's see. BPA for laboratory supplies, office space, refuse collection and recycling services, ground maintenance services, court recording hardware, software, prompt. Propent injection? I don't even know what that is. Let's see. Small business event. So there's a small business event coming up. Transformation support services. Aeronautical maps. That's interesting. Sequencing of sequel content samples for shotgun metagenome analysis. Uh, procurement of blue coated cloths. Surgical trays, semi-automatic wire stripping machine. Main repair of manufacturing equipment and systems using explosive, non-explosive. Oof. Data management and forecasting initiative, design, build, construction. There's 500 things on this list, so... Um, Construct specialty care building, rescue knives. I don't even know what a rescue knife is. And active dried yeast. Internal revenue service, tra transformation strategy office, TX payer 360 employment tool solution, crisis management system, automated sliding gate maintenance, echocardiography, beds and chairs. Uh, U.S. Coast Guard, New York, body repair, FY24, okay. Submarine outboard, underwater cable. Anybody see anything interesting that they want to look at? And by the way, drop your questions in here. Post-wide custodial services. Source out for bulk r rations. Okay. Maybe we'll look at that. Broadcast advertising in Vermont using non-commercial standing advertising program. All right, I'm going to look at that because one of my neighbors does advertising. So I want to look at, let me look at that and see um, this particular opportunity. So let's, let's look at this advertising one here. Let's go over here. Of course, it doesn't come up. I don't know why. Why didn't you come up? Okay. Oh, let's go back over here and figure out why didn't this one come up. Search for it differently. Bingo. All right. So let's pull this up. Let's pull on these requirements. By the way, as always, if you have any questions for us, I'll put that in the bottom. All right, so let's pull it up. This broadcasting advertising in Vermont using non-commercial standing advertising program. I don't know what any of that means. All right, source of notice for market research and planning purposes. Uh, don't get discouraged when they say this does not obligate them to award a contract or provide funds. Remember, you're, you're trying to get in front of the customer and let them know that you have the capabilities, you've got the capacity to be able to do this project. This is in your wheelhouse. Um, this project, let's see, broadcast advertising, television, radio, 
uh, using this NCSA program. Every state has a state broadcasting association. Let's see, under this program, government agency on profit, market coverage to the SBA for a state where it wants every advertisement. SBA for the state assures requirement to met with placing it in member stations. All right. Period of performance, September 24. So it's base period plus two one year options. So it says here, your capability packages may not exceed 15 pages, uh, must be submitted electronically, and should contain sufficient information to support a conclusion that the submitting contract has the capability to meet all the requirements of the PWS. Generic capability statements for advertising services do not address the NCSA program and will be considered non-responsive. Makes sense? Makes sense to me. So let's pull up the requirements. And again, I like my um, Google Sheets, Google Docs. So I'm going to pull this up. Give me a second. We're doing this in real time. All right, so here's the performance work statement. All right, so it says here, uh, objectives to provide this advertise and these programs. Kind of, It's kind of copying what it said on the other sheet. Nothing special here. Go down a little bit. All right, here you go. So it says you need to develop an advertising program. Make announcements. DMA plays. Do data collection reporting. Monthly staff report. Tracks report. Frequency breakdown report. Use their branding styles. Comply with their graphics charts. Okay. So all this says is what they're expecting you to do, right? And I give you examples of it. That's why I like working in the government. And then when you go back over here to this, it says, okay, now that you've seen a PWS, what I just showed everybody, you're going to submit a package showing that you have the ability to be able to meet all these requirements. So again, you're not doing a proposal. You're not actually pricing it. You're just saying, hey, um, we're going to submit a package showing that we have the capabilities of doing that. So that's why I like Source of Thought because even if this particular, uh, who, let's see who this is. This is... So here, um, the KO for VTR, Vermont National Guard, Kathleen O'Neill and Joyce, even though, though you may not be able to do this particular project, um, the idea is to get in front of the customer and let them know that you have the capabilities um, and that you actually are competent. And so what I found is that when we do this enough, um, government officials reach back out to us and they help, they ask us for help on certain requirements because they know that we are the professionals and we're the experts. So again, I'm using Sam.gov tonight and we're pulling down source of sought notices. So I, that was this one for broadcasting advertising. Uh, I'll go through some uh, additional ones. I want, let me look at this, this, this one with armored guard services. And by the way, keep putting your questions in there. I'm going to read them later off. All right, so we've got Armored Guard Services. Okay, under Armored Guard Services here. Again, planning purposes. It says uh, this requirement is unrestricted. Only qualified sellers may submit bids. It says the SSN RFI on Marketplace will start on the state post and otherwise you're going to say global will end on this date. 
So it has on here solicitation by attachment. So it looks like this. It looks like it's misclassified because it has on here a solicitation and by attachment. But they had it marked down as a source of sought. Um Yeah, so this is a little bit confusing. I'm going to do a different one. That one's a little confusing, so we'll do a different one. All right, go back down. Um, I'll ch I'll check your questions in a minute, so you guys know. Patrick, grounds maintenance, educational package. All right, let's look at this. Let me see if I can find I want to find something we could talk about. All right, Recipe Pro Educational Package, Department of Veteran Affairs, Conducting Market Survey, Seek Potential Sources for This Type of Training Subscription. This is Planning Purposes. Looks like they, I don't know what they did, but they put some, they put it inside of a, a, some sort of computer system that messed up all the lettering. This is what I'm saying. This is the kind of stuff that people submit. Oh, sorry, guys. It's small. This is what this is what this is, this is the kind of stuff that the government puts out there publicly and you're like trying to figure out. But you gotta read between all the weeds. And um it says here. Yeah, it's a little tough to read this one. It's a little tough. All right, so close is March 29th, 10 a.m. The subject line is train subscription. Um, okay, so it says here, this looks like a software respiratory training. Scope is it can be used for 80 plus pre-configured customized scenarios, simulations of train discipline, wide range of resistance, compliance, spontaneous breathing parameters across this ventilator machines. So this is a very, very specific type of training. But if, I'm sure if you're a nurse and you're a nurse profession, that this is something that you're well aware of. And so, again, the people that do this type of training are not over here looking at sources of opportunities. They're looking at solicitations and bids because most people are not trained to look at sources of opportunities. So let me do this while we got 95 people on here uh, real quick. If you're just joining us, drop in here your name and tell me what is it you do. Uh, let us know. And also, uh, while you're here, um, give us a thumbs up, please. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, we are hosting a webinar in 30 minutes at 8 o'clock uh, at GovCon Eric that join, where we're going to help talk about our five-day challenge of helping you find teaming partners, uh, people to work with in the space so that you can grow and scale your business, partnering up with other companies that are already doing the kind of work that you want to do. So. That's here. I'm going to drop that link in the chat as well for folks. Uh, basically, it's the one right below me. But I'll drop it again for you guys out here. And let me look at some of the questions. Okay, Maribel had something about digital adoption professionals. Maribel, I'll go back and look at that one for you. Let's see. Is it best to respond for sources or wait for the actual RFP bid? So again, if you missed us in the beginning, now that there's some people watching, if you... <clears throat> This is the thing, R. Joseph, and this is a great question. If you wait for the RFP bid, it may never come out. So everything that's a source of sought does not go to RFP, does not go to bid. If we go back to this sheet, let me show you guys here. If we go back here, so during the source of sought phase, it's in the blue pre-solicitation, right? That's where doing market research. The government um, may, at the market research phase, right, determine that depending upon the size, if they've got two or more bidders um, that are in a social economic category, they may decide to just bid between those two bidders. They may decide to set it aside for women-owned small business. They may decide to set it for hub zone. So if you don't respond, right, R. Joseph, at the source of sought phase, 
the government, what they do is they tell us that it's our fault that there are programs and projects not being set aside for small businesses because this is how they determine if there are enough small businesses to bid a contract, a bid opportunity. This is their way of determining that. So again, if you don't respond, everyone listening to this, if you fail to respond during this phase, you are partially to blame for why there's not enough contracts being set aside for small businesses because the government will use that to say, well, no small businesses responded, so we're going to make it open, full and open so everyone can bid it because they don't want to um, have a, a situation where nobody bids the project. So I want to say that. Do not do that. Don't wait, right? The reason why we're teaching this is because the point is to bid it. That's why I'm teaching you this, guys, because I want. it's not bidding, by the way. It's responding. So the reason why we teach you this is because I want you to respond to these notices at this phase. Okay? So do not wait because what we do is mm, when we respond, you're going to get in front of the customer. Remember, guys, 50% or more of the opportunities are not being posted publicly on SAM.gov. So if you fail to respond and the government comes out with an opportunity that's negotiated directly with your competitor, well, that's on you because you chose to not respond during a time where the government could speak to you. Most of us, you know, we want to respond. We want to respond here in the green. After we see a solicitation, then we want to call the government, blow up their phone and ask them, hey, can we talk to you about this bid? No, sir, you can't. That's why I'm educating folks, because once the solicitation is out, you cannot talk to them. So you cannot talk to them once it's in green. But while it's in the blue phase, you can still talk to them about the requirements and you can talk to them about the challenges. And, and everything else under the sun, it's perfectly legal. Maribel says, I pulled up a source of opportunity. It lists an interested vendor list. Who are they? Did they add their names to this list? Um, so again, Maribel, without any further context, I am, I'm not sure. Um, because what I typically tell people is whatever the instructions are in the source of SOP, that's what you do. So if the instructions say, right, for you to add your name to the interested vendors list, then that's what you do. Again, um, there have been a number of times where I've sent in a source of SOT, the government called me or emailed me and then sent me over something to bid. This happens quite often. So if you don't respond, that's not going to happen to you. Margaret says, why is it so challenging to get companies to give you quotes on jobs? Because, Margaret, you're not building relationships with companies. When you don't build relationships with people, then they don't want to support you because it costs them money to give you prices on jobs. So if you don't build that relationship, right? So for me, Margaret, uh, you're probably going about the wrong way. You're calling somebody and say, hey, give me a price on this. Hey, give me a price on this. Hey, give me a price on this. And like, they don't know you. And so basically they're taking a chance with a stranger and they're spending their time and money and effort to give you a price and you might win a contract and give it to somebody else. So I always encourage people to build relationships first. Leroy says, can you share tips for building strong relationships with government content officers? So Leroy, this is one of those tips that I'm sharing with you right here. So Leroy, again, if you find some photography services at this phase now, then you can start developing that relationship. Uh, this is how I, this is, this is literally the foundation for the relationships that I build with the government officials is this. And yes, there's countries that are for, for photographers. All right. Um, I don't know, guys. I'm not the encyclopedia of contracts. So I don't want people to say, Eric, are there contracts for this? Are there contracts for that? We have a video where it says, does the government buy what you sell? Go watch that video. Do your research. There's two free websites that you could use to do research on does the government buy what you sell? I don't have a Rolodex of everything that the government buys. There's probably over... Two, three hundred thousand SKUs, maybe half a million SKUs. I don't know, but there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of SKUs that the government buys. I can't possibly know everything. So, my T says, What are the requirements to join SAM? 
So again, you do not have to be registered to do this. Uh, you can join Sam, right? You don't actually have to register. We're not, you don't have to register a business in Sam to search Sam. So searching Sam is different, right? Um, that what we're doing is searching Sam. We're not teaching how to get registered. So I think Joseph answered this, this asked this question earlier. Um, he said, use our time wisely. So the best use of your time is to respond to the source of sought. The worst use of your time is to wait for the bid to come out. Doc Wright and Darren, what's up, guys? Okay. All right. Uh, what's going on, Damien? Practicing tennis when you should be submitting bids. Well, I mean, listen. See what Ashley says. When you respond to opportunities in blue, the CLs will notify you when the RFP is released. So they actually, I've had CLs say to me, are you going to bid this? Right? Okay. When you're starting out, how can you build that relationship? Like they said, you said they don't know you. Margaret, this is what we're talking about. This, what we're teaching you is how you build the relationship. This is why I'm teaching you guys this, because this is how you build the relationship. If you, if a government official puts out market research, they're coming to you guys and saying, how do we do this? They don't know, right? And so your job is to come in. They don't know who's out there who has the capacity. So your job is to come in, tell them that you, show them that you're the expert. And a lot of times what they'll do is they'll ask you for help. I cannot tell you how many requirements that I've helped the government shape because I went and said, look, I don't think this makes sense. I don't think this makes sense. We should do it this way. So this is how you start building those relationships. Now, let me go back up to Arsha. He wants to look at the employee uh, retention program. All right. He said it was towards the top. I'll scroll back up. Oh, employee recognition program. All right, let me go look at employee recognition program. All right, employee recognition program. All right, so again, um, the objective of this source of site notice is to identify potential subcontract companies that are qualified and capable of meeting the, prog the project objectives. Um, the project objective at a high level is to provide innovative and comprehensive employee recognition program that deliver a platform to help employees achieve, belong, and stay with recognition, celebration anniversaries, provide services to improve culture and enhance employee experience. Let's open up this tab and see what it says. All right. So this is Department of Energy, National Renewable Energy, uh, Energy Laboratory. The objective, so they wanted things like peer-to-peer -peer awards, anniversaries. Social recognition, retirement, manager reminder emails. Um, so again, you meet the criteria outline. Um, once the source is listed, is compiled, compiled, the alliance reserves the right to add additional sources to the list and discretion, proposal selection, third final step, you'll be asked to demonstrate your technical approach to the project as well as perform the work. Um, base period performance, 12 months, plus four one-year options. The Alliance program anticipates lead time January 1st, 2025 at the latest. All right, here are the requirements. This is what we talk about. So here are the requirements on this. All right, so your uh, limited submission to two to five pages. Just company name, address, company URL, point of contact, email, phone number, your capability statement that provides a narrative of your expertise within the project scope, size, and complexity, um, equipment services, capability, Right, and then you answer these uh, questions in the table, um, and that's it. No, it has one through six. Complete your Excel attachments, rough word magnitude per year, and then estimated lead times. 
So again, it's not a lot of work to respond to these things. Um, we just typically tend to not do it. So uh, please hit the like button. So Rashad says, how important is the capability statement at this point of relationship? If you notice, the first requirement was capability statement. So Rashad, if you notice that the first requirement that they asked us to submit was our capability statement. I'll pull it back up. Right? So a lot of times when you're submitting these types of responses, right, it says here, number three, your company capability statement. So um, if you don't have it, then you can't participate, right? So again, to me, this is critical at this stage. Um, by the way, uh, Ershad's question was a really good question because um, I had someone recently um, that I know of personally, they sent an email to someone that I know without submitting a capability statement. And so in my opinion, it just went to junk mail because the person, um, they don't know what you do. So if you send an email without a capability statement, how do you expect the person to know what is it that you do? Ashley says, a shot's important to have one page capability focus on the federal sector. It's your next PLC, past performance, services, RFI, source size, detail, company, and ask questions. It's about five pages. So again, you know, if you don't have this stuff, and um, right, then you can't respond. Like they, like the government. If you send them an email without this information, if you send a teaming partner this without your, like, they have no idea what you do or how to help you. And so I had someone to send an email recently without putting a capability statement. And so I'm like, okay, what is it that you? What exactly are you expecting this person to say to you when you don't have on there uh, an easy way for them to? Look at it and see the area you specialize in, your uh, this uni unique distinguishing factors, what makes you special, uh, the history of what you've done. Like, how do you, like, I'm not sure what are you expecting people to do for you when you, you can't even articulate what it is that you do to them to get them to be able to help you. Like, no one knows how to help you guys if you just send me an email saying, um, I don't know, like, I'm a janitorial company. Okay, well, great. Mr. Janitorial Company, but what areas do you service and how many people do you have and how what's your capacity and you know how many projects have you done and how many projects can you handle? There's a lot that goes into that and we can't not get this information based on simplified emails. So uh, Benny says, how do you do that with no experience? So Benny, again, that's what we talked about early on, guys. If you don't have any experience, you got to team up with people. You have to team up with folks who have experience uh, and that's kind of what we, you know, those are the things that we're teaching people, right? How do you find teaming partners? Uh, I brought this up earlier today. One of my podcast guests, I uh, just interviewed a couple hours ago. That's about 40 million a year. Whenever he wants to break into a new office or a new agency, he teams up with someone who has experience, works with them, learns it, understands it, and then he starts to develop the capacity and grow it out. But that's how you break into any one of these particular uh agencies or offices that you want to work with with the federal government that you've never worked before you got to team up with folks and if you want and ben if you want to know how to do that join our webinar at eight o'clock in just 12 minutes all right uh let's see i provide janitorial services i open and talk to see where our capabilities fit good stuff well listen like i said i've got 12 minutes i'm going to jump on this other webinar I uh, hope to see some of you folks over there. Thank you, guys. If you have any questions, like I said, you guys know where to reach us. I'll drop it back on the screen again. Um, send us an email, service at govconjines.com. Give us a call, 786-477-0477. We're starting our next cohort training um, starting in April. So uh, we're closing out the sales month this month for our trainings and our programs. Look forward to all you guys who sign up for our five-day challenge for finding teaming partners to work with, collaborate with. Um, and clients to help support and service. So look, right now what's happening in this marketplace is crazy. Uh, they're, they're, they're back to giving out larger and larger projects to fewer and fewer people. And so if you don't work with p companies and team members that have capacity, that have capability and that have capital, it's going to be a hard road to plow. So if you're just starting out and you're new and you don't have those things, it's going to be really difficult um, for you because uh, the, the government, the baby boomers are retiring. 
Um, and the government's spending more money than ever before. In 2023, they spent $163 billion of small businesses with half the number of companies. So if they've got half the number of people getting double the money, uh, that means the contract sizes are getting bigger and they're going to far few companies. So it's it's almost um, at this, it's becoming to the point where you have to team up with other people to make it in this marketplace. You have to work with other companies uh, to make it in this marketplace. So I just I want to say that because I don't want you to spend two years, three years chasing your tail and get discouraged because like this doesn't work. It absolutely works. Um, there's a long road ahead of you, but there's plenty on the other side of that in terms of success, prosperity. Um, and so for you, all of those folks out here that are interested, like I said, uh, visit GoConGiants.com, our website. But more importantly, you can visit our webinar tonight um, that we're going to start in 10 minutes. So I'm going to take a break and I'll see you guys next week. We're going to bring on uh, Randy Ward and talk about how she um, landed her consultant client. How she won contracts with the FAA. We're going to bring her up and then uh, we're going to go over a specific opportunity. So thanks so much for joining us tonight, guys. Be good. I'll see you.